Hey everyone, welcome to Math 104, section 6.2, part 1. We're going to be working on adding and subtracting rational expressions. Now in order to add and subtract fractions, we need to have a common denominator. So that means we're going to need to have to work on things that look like the least common multiple. So we're going to start by finding the least common multiple of integers. And one way to do that is just by listing the multiple. Recall that multiples are what we get when we take a number and multiply by 1, 2, 3. You can think of it as being counting by that number. So we're counting by 8s to get the multiples of 8. We're counting by 10s to get the multiples of 10s. So we want the least common multiple. That's the smallest number that's in both lists. So here are the multiples of 8. And here are the multiples of 10. And the first mesh is 40. So that means the LCM of 8 and 10 is 40. Your turn, number one, find the LCM of four and six. Let's count the multiples. We have four, eight, twelve for four, and six and twelve for six. First match is twelve, so the LCM of four and six is twelve. Uh, a little higher numbers here, we got six, eighteen, and thirty, so I list out the multiples here. And the first match for those is ninety. So you can see when you start getting larger numbers, this method uh, becomes a little bit unwieldy. We'll give it one more go here. Your turn, number two. Right, so listing out the multiples of those, first match is at 45, so the LCM of 5, 9, and 15 is 45. So as the numbers get bigger, this method becomes a little ridiculous. It's great for small numbers, though. It's really quick and easy. But for larger numbers, we should use the prime factorization method. So what we're going to do is for each number, we're going to find the prime factorization. And then we're going to list each unique base that appears in either one of these lists. So here we have 2 as a base, we have 3 as a base, and we have 5. So we're going to list all three of those. Make sure you list every base that you see. It does not have to be in both of them. It only has to appear in one of them. All right, now, in this list, we go through, and for each base, we select the highest exponent. For 2, the biggest exponent is a 3. For the 3s, the bigger exponent is 2. And for 5, we just have 1. Now the LCM is the product of those. We're going to multiply all those together, and we get, it is 360, yes. We have 360 for that one. All right, now do your turn number three using the prime factorization method. All right, so those are two prime factorizations. We got 2 squared times 5, 3 times 5 squared. So we're going to list all the unique bases, 2, 3, and 5, and select the highest exponent for each one. For the 2, biggest exponent is 2. 3, we just have one of them, exponent of 1. And for the 5s, highest exponent is 2. So we'll multiply all those together, and we get 300. So 300 is the LCM of 20 and 75. Now what we're going to be doing then is finding the LCM of polynomials. And since polynomials include coefficients, uh, the first step in finding LCM of some monomials is going to be to find the LCM of the coefficients using one of these two methods. Now in this method, we've got some small numbers, so we can just list them out like we did in your turn number one. And now we know that the LCM of 4 and 6 is 12. So 12 would be the coefficient on the LCM. All right, now we're going to do basically this type of thing with all the variables. We're going to list every unique base. And it has x and y. Now for each variable, 
go through and select the largest exponent amongst both terms. So for x's, we have one here and three here, so we'll have three in the LCM. And for y's, we just have two, it's the only one. So the LCM is 12 x to the third y squared. So make sure to keep this straight from GCF. GCF, we're selecting the smallest exponent. LCM, we're selecting the larger exponent. And that makes sense because factors are smaller and multiples are bigger. So you need more exponents. Your turn number four. All right, LCM of 8 and 12 is 24. And we have two variables. Largest exponent of x is 4. Largest exponent of y is 5. So 24, x to the fourth, y to the fifth. This procedure works for any number of monomials. So next up, we're going to look at some examples with three. Up into your turn number five. No example of that one. But we'll use the same procedure here. So we'll start off with the numbers. We've got 12, 16, and 8. So 12 is equal to 2 squared times 3. 16 is equal to 2 to the fourth power. And 8 is 2 to the third. All right, so we're going to list each, each base, 12, 16 and 8. So the LCM of 12, 16, and 8 is the largest exponent on 2 is 4, and we have just a single 3. So that gives us 48. So the LCM of 12, 16, and 8 is 48. So that's the coefficient on the LCM, and now we'll go through each variable and do it individually. We'll select the largest exponent for each variable. On the x's, the largest variable is 7, so that's x to the 7th. For the y's, it's 4. And for the z's, it's 5. So the LCM is 48, x to the 7th, y to the 4th, z to the 5th. All right, now we're going to step it up to polynomials. And we're going to find the LCM of x squared plus 4x plus 4 and x to the third minus x squared minus 6x. So the first step in finding the LCM of those is to break them up into factors. So we're going to factor both of these. This is a perfect square trinomial. Some of you perhaps are starting to recognize those by sight now. So that's x plus 2 squared. And this one, we can factor out an x. That gives us x squared minus x minus 6. Then we have to factor this. By finding two numbers and multiplying to get negative 6, add to get negative 1. So that's going to be x times x 
minus 3x <laughs> plus 2. All right, so there's our two factorizations. Now, the ideas we've been using so far also apply to binomials. We're just going to select the one with the largest exponent. Right? These are a base just like anything else. Here's the base, there's the exponent. So just because it's a binomial, it doesn't mean it can't be a base. All right, now we have three unique bases here. We have x, we have x minus 3, and we have x plus 2. Now we just go through and select the largest exponent for each one. x just has one exponent, x minus 3 just one. x plus 2, we have two of them, larger exponent is 2. So there's the LCM, x times x minus 3 times x plus 2. That brings us to your turn number 6. All right, another perfect square trinomial, factors into x minus 3 squared. And here, we can factor out an x squared. And that gives us x squared plus 2x minus 15. And then this trinomial will factor into. Two numbers multiply to get negative 15, add to get 2, so that is x plus 5 and x minus 3. All right, now we're going to list each base individually. We have an x, there's a base, x plus 5, there's a base, and x minus 3, there's a base. Now let's select the largest exponent for each one. We've got a 2 here for the x. x plus 5, that's the only one, so there's 1 there. And we have x minus 3, the first power, and second power, we'll select the larger of the 2. And therefore, our LCM is x squared times x minus 5 times x minus 3 squared, or x plus 5 times x minus 3 squared. All right, now we're going to do 6x to the third minus 42x squared and 4x to the third minus 16x squared minus 84x. All right, with any factoring problem, what do we start with? GCF. So we're going to factor out the GCF here. So we'll take out 6x squared, and that leaves x minus 7. Now here we can factor out 4x. And that gives us x squared minus 4x minus 21. All right, now we can factor this. And that's going to factor into two numbers that multiply to get negative 21, add to get negative 4. x minus 7, x plus 3. Okay, now we have a little different situation than last time. We've got a bunch of factors that we're going to need to uh, work with, but let's work with these coefficients first. We've got a 4 here and a 6 here, so we're going to need to find the LCM of those two numbers first. So as we saw in the warm-up, that LCM is 12. So 12 will be, oops, yeah, that's fine, 12 will be the coefficient. And now we got to look at the different bases, so let's start with the x base here. We have a single x here and a x squared here. So that means take the larger of the two exponents there, so now we have 12 x squared. And now we'll fill in with binomials. The other two bases are x minus 7 and x plus 3. And both of those are just the first power. So our LCM is 12 x squared times x minus 7 times x plus 3. All right, now we got three practice problems. Your turn, number seven. Go ahead and do those at your own pace. Cool. 
we'll factor this one. We can factor out a 2x. That gives us x plus 2. And then over here, before we start factoring this thing, we're going to factor out an LCM of 4. I mean, a GCF of 4. And then we get x squared minus x minus 6. And this will factor into x minus 3, x plus 2. Okay, so we've got a couple of coefficients. LCM of 2 and 4 is 4. We have an x base, only one. So we'll leave that as 4x. Then we have two binomials. So we have x plus 2 and x minus 3. In these factorizations, all of those are to the first power. So we're done. 4x times x plus 2 times x minus 3. Next up, we got 25x to the fourth plus 50x to the third. So here we can factor out 25x to the third power. That gives us x plus 2. And here we can factor out 15 to get x squared plus 4x plus 4. All right, so we're done factoring here. You can keep going here. So it gives us 15. We got a perfect square trinomial, x plus 2 squared. All right, now we need the LCM of 25 and 15. 25 is 5 squared, and 15 is 3 times 5. So that means the LCM is going to equal 3 times 5 squared. 25 times 3, that is 75. So the LCM of 25 and 15 is 75. So that will be the coefficient on the LCM of those two. Uh, next up, we've got an x over here to the third power, so we'll put that here. And our last base is the binomial x plus 2. And of those two, the larger exponent is 2, so that goes here. And our LCM is 75 x to the third times x plus 2 squared. All right, last one, part C. 12x squared minus 24x. Here we can factor out 12x, and that gives us x minus 2. And over here we can factor out an 8x squared. And that gives us x squared plus 3x minus 10. Now we can factor that trinomial. Two numbers multiply to get negative 10, add to get 3. That is x plus 5 times x minus 2. Now we need the LCM of 8 and 12. I believe we found that earlier to be 24. Maybe not. Anyway, LCM of 8 and 12 is 24. Now let's look at the x's, x base, larger exponent is 2. So x squared goes down here. And now we've got two binomials. We have x minus 2 
and x plus 5. All of those are to the first power, so there's the LCM. 24x squared times x minus 2 times x plus 5. So this is going to be the first step in what we do next. We're going to be rewriting rational expressions with a common denominator. Now in this case, if we look at these two denominators, they can't be factored, and there's no common factors between them. So that means, in order to get a common denominator, what we're going to need to do here is multiply each fraction by the other fraction's denominator over itself. All right, so we're going to multiply this fraction by this fraction's denominator over itself. So we'll multiply x plus 5 over x plus 5. And in doing so, we're multiplying by 1 because anything divided by itself is 1. And multiplying by 1 does not change the value. We're not changing the value of either of these fractions. We're only changing what they look like. All right, so that's how we'll change the first fraction. And the second fraction, we'll do 4 over x plus 5 times the other fraction's denominator over itself. 3x minus 2 over 3x minus 2. Now, when we multiply, the denominators leave them in factored form, always, throughout this entire chapter. Don't foil the denominators. It's more work, you can make mistakes, and it's counterproductive because uh, when we get down to the final answer, we want to be able to see whether or not we can simplify that. And if we're going to simplify, we need to factor anyway, so there's no point in foiling and then having to factor again when you get to the end. So just leave it in factored form. So this gives us, we multiply across here, uh, we can go ahead and distribute, or we can leave it as 5x times x plus 5. Uh, let's go ahead and distribute. So 5x times x is 5x squared, 5x times 5 is 25x. And on the bottom, leaving it in factored form, we get x plus 5 and 3x minus 2. Now it's a good idea to go ahead and distribute because later on when we're actually adding and subtracting rational expression, we're going to need it in this form in order to be able to combine the tops. So that's why we distribute on top or foil on top as needed, but go ahead and leave that denominator in factored form. Okay, over here. Now we're going to distribute 4 into 3x minus 2, so that gives us 12x minus 8, and then we get the x plus 5 and 3x minus 2 in the denominator. So now we have transformed these two fractions into these two fractions which have the same denominator. And then next time, we'll be combining them together. That brings us to your turn number eight. So just like we did in the example, we're going to multiply each fraction by the other fraction's denominator over itself. All right, so first fraction, I'm multiplying by x minus 7 over x minus 7. Second fraction multiplied by 2x plus 5 over 2x plus 5. Distributing, you get 3x minus 21 over 2x plus 5, x 
minus 7. And on this side, it gives us 12x squared plus 30x. Over our common denominator. Part B. And now this one's a little bit different. We can actually factor that one. So your first step is going to be to factor this. Oops. All right, now there's our two fractions. So now we actually do have a common factor in this one. They both have x plus 3. So in order to get a common denominator, we're going to need to multiply by whatever is missing. So let's find uh, the least common multiple of these two denominators. All right, we only have two bases. We have x and we have x plus 3. Both of them to the first power, so this is our LCM, x times x plus 3. So there's our least common denominator. So that means this fraction's all set. It already has everything. But what are we missing over here? That denominator, we're missing that x. So we're going to multiply this one by x over x. And that turns this one into 3x squared over x times x plus 3. All right, so that's going to be the game going forward. We're going to factor the denominators and then list all the factors we have in the LCM, and then just multiply by whatever's missing. So we are going to rewrite these fractions in terms of the LCM of the denominators. Now we've got these two denominators, let's factor both of them. So for this one, we have x times x minus 3. And for this one, this factors into x minus 3 times x minus 1. So we have three unique bases. We have x, we have x minus 3, and we have x minus 1. So now we're going to make sure both fractions have all of the bases. So this one's missing an x. All right, the LCM is x times x minus 3 times x minus 1. So over here, we have the x minus 3, we have x minus 1, we're missing the x. So that means we need to multiply this one by x over x. All right, so that gives us 3x over, and I'm going to write it in factored form, x minus 3, x minus 1, times x over x, and that gives us 3x squared over x times x minus 1, x minus 3. 
And now this fraction, if you look at the denominator here, we have the x, we have the x minus 3, we're missing x minus 1, so that's the one we need. So that's what we're going to multiply by. So this one becomes 2x minus 3 over x times x minus 3 times x minus 1 over x minus 1. So up top, we've got two binomials multiplied. We're going to FOIL here. So that gives us 2x squared. We'll have minus 2x, minus 3x, that's minus 5x. And we got negative 3 times negative 1, so plus 3. All that over x times x minus 1 times x minus 3. And there's our two fractions with the same denominator. Your turn number nine. So we can factor these. First one factors into x times x minus 2. Here we need two numbers to multiply to get negative 12 add to get negative 8. That's negative 2 and negative 6. So we get x minus 2 times x minus 6. So our three bases then are x, x minus 2, and x minus 6. So that's going to be our common denominator. So up here, we have the x. We have the x minus 2, we're missing x minus 6. So we'll multiply this first fraction. By x minus 6 over x minus 6. Okay, foil on top. 2x squared minus 12x minus 7x, that's minus 19x. And plus 42 all over x times x minus 2 times x minus 6. Second fraction. 3x minus 2 over x minus 2, x minus 6. And this one, we've got the x minus 2, we got the x minus 6, we're missing that x. So we're going to multiply this by x over x. Distributing the x in up top, that gives us 3x squared minus 2x over our common denominator, x times x minus 2 times x minus 6. And part b. Now we need two numbers to multiply to get negative 2 and add to go 1. Right, so this will factor into y plus 2z times y minus z. And here we have difference of squares, so that factors into y plus c times y minus c. So 
So there is our LCM. All right, we've got three different bases, and they're all to the first power. So this first fraction here, we got 3y over y plus 2z times y minus z. So what are we missing here? We got the y plus 2z, we got the y minus z, we're missing y plus z. So we're going to multiply this one by y plus z over y plus z. Now we're going to distribute 3y in, so that gives us 3y squared plus 3yz over y plus 2z, y plus z, and y minus z. Next fraction, 4y minus 1 over y plus z times y minus z. So what are we missing here? We got the y plus z, we got the y minus z, we're missing y plus 2z. So we'll multiply this by y plus 2z over y plus 2z. All right, we got binomials being multiplied here, so we're going to foil the top. That is 4y squared outside plus 8yz inside minus y and last minus 2z all over our common denominator of y plus 2z y plus z and y minus z Now next time we're actually going to be, going to be adding and uh, subtracting these expressions. So all of this stuff will just be the first few steps in those problems. So make sure you master this stuff.